welcome to The Drum Show. My name is Chris Quinlan and tonight's episode is all about the Fibonacci numbers, okay? Um, maybe some of you guys and gals out there are studying them at this minute in school. Um, let me tell you about the Fibonacci numbers. The Fibonacci numbers are, it's mathematics at the minute, so you could call it math metal if you want. <laughs> um, but um, what I'm talking about is if we take zero and one, okay, and then add them together, we get one. And then what happens is we take the sum of the, s the subsequent two numbers, or the previous two numbers, I should say, and then what happens is it, it moves on. So zero plus one is one. Go back one. One plus one is two. Two plus one is three. Three plus two is five. Okay, five plus three, you're always going one back, you see, it makes eight. Eight and five is 13, and on it goes on and on and on. Why am I talking about this in a, on a music show? Um, essentially what goes on is that um, the Fibonacci numbers are, is basically the law of nature. Um, essentially it's the, the way that... Um, uh, you have pine cones, the way that um, flowers branch or trees branch out, uh, you, like even down to vegetables like cauliflower and the florets, you know, that kind of thing. It goes out in a Fibonacci sequence. The way that rabbits breed and, um, and the like, it is a law of nature. Um, what happens is that um, these Fibonacci numbers is often known as the... Um, golden mean and essentially what that means is uh, it's it, you do the algebra so to speak and it's even used in architecture uh, and all sorts of different ways shapes and forms mathematically to get what we want because it's a basic law of nature it's a way of just adding things up we even use it in um, projecting things like the share market not that I'm involved with anything like that but um, you can use the Fibonacci sequence by projecting share market rises and share market drops, you see. And um, that's how stockbrokers use it. So it's that important. This is a music show. Um, how do we use it in music? Uh, what happens is that there's some very famous composers that uh, use the Fibonacci numbers or the Fibonacci sequence in their bar structures, in the way that they use notes. If you take one is the, uh, the root note of a piece of music, so if we take that as C, okay, then you play C again, then two would be D, and then three would be um, E, five would be G, and so on it goes like that. Um, some famous composers that um, use this kind of business is uh, Claude Debussy in his piano work, um, Images, spelled, it looks like images, I-M-A-G-E-S, images, there's a Fibonacci sequence in that. A piece of music that I uh, needed to study for HSC way back when, before it became the VCE, uh, was Bela Bartok's Music for Strings, Percussion and Celeste. And um, one of the, the movements begins with a classic Fibonacci sequence. And, uh, and on it goes. Probably in, a, in contemporary thought, um, in contemporary music, one of the bands that is quite famous for using the Fibonacci sequence is the band Tool with uh, Danny Carey on drums. And um, the, the piece of work Lateralis, if you want to check that out, um, the band uses the Fibonacci sequence quite a lot in that piece of music. Not only the drumming, but the sequence of the music and also the lyrics um, comes out in one phrase or one word then another word then two words then three words then five words then eight words it's incredibly important to understand albeit a little bit advanced for music so tonight is all about the Fibonacci sequence now why is it called Fibonacci essentially um, Mr Fibonacci was a <laughs> um, was an Italian mathematician in the 11th century. Uh, uh, I've got my little notes here. When was he born? Um, around about 1170, and he passed away around about the um, time of 1250. He was quite famous in the day, 
and he didn't invent the numbers. He essentially studied um, Indian and Arabic mathematics, essentially. Uh, and essentially in the day, it was used by traders, okay, in the Mediterranean area of Europe and all that. And he noticed that, you know, he was Italian, so we're talking about Italy. And um, we're talking about traders that came from the north of Africa using their way of adding things up and trading goods and all this sort of business. And um, he studied that and he basically came upon this sequence that is nature, okay? Flowers, trees branching out. So you can't, you can't walk down the street without sort of having some kind of Fibonacci sequence staring you in the face, whether it's a tree, a flower, pine cones, if you have a look at two rabbits having a crack at each other, <laughs> that's how it all starts. And if you go home and Dad's uh, worried about his share market prices, he's working out, he's trying to work out whether he can retire using the Fibonacci sequence as well. Anyway, um, thank you, Mother, for the rabbits. Anyway, there it is. Now let's talk about it musically. There's a couple of different ways that you can use it. If I just take a normal... crotchet beat, I could use it as, remembering that we're going one, one, two, three, five, eight, thirteen if I could fit it in, okay, and then even up to twenty-one if you work the sequence out. What I might do is I'll put a little um, sequence of it underneath here for you now, okay, so you can see the Fibonacci sequence underneath as we speak with the wonders of um, computers and all that sort of stuff. So if I'm just playing that, okay, now what it would be would be first a crotchet, another crotchet, quavers, triplets, quintuplet, say hippopotamus, one, two, three, four, five, and then eight, um, one eanda, two eanda if you want. Uh, Okay, so if I just cycle that a bit. I did was I started to improvise on it, going to use Fibonacci, these kinds of sequences that are so popular in certain streams of music, such as uh, progressive metal, a la Tool. Um, you're talking about, um, uh, I could go back a, a generation, I suppose, and talk about um, King Crimson, who are essentially, um, I think the band Tool actually says that um, if they can go out on stage and sound like King Crimson, they would be happy. I think that's a quote from one of the guys from Tool. And you can also talk about um, progressive rock bands s uh, recently been out, actually. Uh, yes, in particular, John Anderson, um, the former lead singer. He should be still a lead singer. But anyway, um, he's very big on the Fibonacci sequences. And going back even further, you're into classical music. I've mentioned before Bela Bartok, the very famous Hungarian composer. And before him, the French composer Claude Debussy. So here we go. That's the first segment of the year. I'll see you after the break. <laughs> <laughs> 